Oh. Shout out to all of the YouTubers who are a one-man operation. This is a lot of setup. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. My name is James Shepard. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing and if you're into it, hit that like button. So today I decided that I wanted to do a really quick informal breakdown of my camera bag and everything that I carry whenever I go out shooting, whether it's photo or video. This backpack kind of just carries everything that I need on a daily basis. I always found it really interesting watching what other people choose to carry with them whenever they're doing photography or videography because at the end of the day we're all attempting to do the same thing just with different tools. So I always found it interesting to see what other creators used in their toolbox to create their versions of this art of photography and videography. So I decided to make my own video going over what I carry. So first off this is the Peak Design Everyday Backpack 20 liters in ash and I am obsessed with this backpack. I'm obsessed with this company. Um, I remember, I think it was almost two years ago, two years ago, that I saw this backpack online and I obsessed over it day in, day out. It was ridiculous. All of my friends were getting so irritated with how often I would say, oh, oh, but Peak 20 liter and ash, but Peak Design 20 liter and ash? Did you see that? Hey, do you know that there's this Peak Design backpack that had 20 liters and ash? And they got so sick of it that I uh, that they eventually pressured me into buying one. They eventually convinced me into buying it so I would just shut up for once. And so I finally got it and I love it. I use it literally every single day. I actually have two of them. Um, this one is my photography one. And in another video, I'll show you guys my college like supply setup and it's the same backpack different setup that's how much i love this backpack that's my recommendation peak design everyday backpack 20 liters or 30 liters they have a 30 liter version depending on how much you have to carry but for me 20 liters is fine small dude small bag so first up at the top of the bag there is a laptop compartment that i also sometimes use depending on what i'm carrying that day or what i'm trying to do i'll bring my ipad instead of my laptop but on a typical everyday basis, it's gonna be the 15 inch MacBook Pro in silver that just kind of sits in that sleeve up there. It just makes it really convenient if I ever need to offload anything, whether it be photo or video, to clear up some card space. And if I go on a long trip, essential because you gotta back up your stuff. Also in this top compartment, there's like a smaller little sleeve and in here I just kind of keep a bunch of junk. So one of the things I keep in this pouch is a USB-C hub from Seiteshi. This is a USB-C like extension that gives me essentially everything that I need two USBs, an SD, a micro SD, two USBs, uh, an HDMI, whatever. But it gives me everything I need depending on what I'm going to be doing, and especially for SDs because for whatever reason the MacBook Pros don't have SD card slots. Also, I have a little USB C SD micro SD card adapter from Anchor. Now, this is for my iPad. If I ever bring my iPad, um, my iPad only has one USB port, whereas my MacBook has two on each side. So having this to be able to offload things onto my iPad is also essential. Gotta use this. Another really important piece to my gear, gum. Because I hate having bad breath and I hate smelling people's bad breath. And whenever you have like bad breath, you know how you can like feel it in your mouth? You can like feel the bad breath. And that's just not what I want to do on a daily basis. It's just bad. Not what you want, bring a pack of gum, saves you countless times. All right, other other like random accessories. I've got an extra SD card. I've got a microfiber cloth because you always need one of those. I've got, I've got a cough drop just in case because you never know. And I bring my Apple Pencil with me depending on whether or not I have my iPad. So one really cool thing about the way that this backpack works is when it opens, you get these like really awesome wings. I like to call them wings. Bam wings on each side of these wings you get these like little individual compartments so on this side i've got chapstick when do you not need chapstick i feel like chapstick is one of those things where you always need it when you don't have it but when you do have it you don't need it so it's always better to have it just in case up here i have a micro usb cable just in case i need to charge anything and over here i have some advil um because a lot of the time whenever you're carrying a heavy bag it's just really bad for your back and it starts to hurt or if you get a headache whenever you're at high altitudes keep 
keep one of these on hand for any occasion. I've got an extra camera battery for the camera I'm about to show you guys, but we won't, we'll get to that in a minute. And over here I've got a pen and a pencil because you never know. All right, so over here on this side, I've got a anchor power bank just for my phone in case my phone dies and or if any of my friends' phones dies and they need a quick charge because your friends are always the most unreliable people and they always bring uncharged phones and then you have to charge their phones for them. So to go along with this, I've got a lightning cable up here and down here I have a pocket knife that you guys probably saw in my EDC video because sometimes you need a knife. Of course, I don't bring this whenever I fly because I will get arrested and that's not the move. But um, whenever you're just going for a shoot out in the woods, out going on a hike, bring a knife. You never know what you'll, what you'll need it for. So let's get into the main body of the bag. Like I mentioned before, the way that Peak Design designs their bags is they give you these shelving units that you're able to customize in any way that you like. What I've noticed is that over time, the more you use the bag, the more you start to learn where you put your things and you're able to just flip the bag from either side, depending on what you need. There is that little bit of time that it's required for you to learn that, but once you get past that, it's beautiful. So up here on this top slot, I've got my Canon 70 to 200 f4. This is a beautiful, beautiful lens. It takes amazing portraits. It's amazing for video. The image stabilization is fantastic. It's an f4, which personally doesn't bother me because I am a broke college student and affording super nice 1.8, 2.8 lenses just isn't really feasible. But this is an amazing lens, even though it's f4. Surprisingly, it's not the heaviest lens in my bag, which is a huge plus for this lens, although I still feel like I could throw this at somebody and just completely wipe them out. Great lens, highly recommend it. Get it if you don't have it. Great focal length, amazing. All right, next up here on the very, very bottom of the bag, I have this guy. This right here is a, from a company called Hoya, Hoya, Hoya. Well, I, don't, I don't know how to say it. So inside of this pouch, what I have is I have all of my variable ND filters. I've only got two in here right now because I'm using one right there and I'm using one right there. Um, typically, I'll have five or six lenses in here that I can just throw over my camera lenses. If you guys don't use variable ND filters, I highly recommend it if you want to step up your photo and video game. Um, one way that's commonly used to describe variable ND filters is that they're like sunglasses for your camera lens. And that's the perfect way to describe them. And one use that I saw for these for on the photography side, I saw somebody take a long exposure of a waterfall. And if you've ever seen any of those pictures, it gives it that it gives it that nice glossy, blurry like feel so it looks like that waterfall is one solid stream of water. It looks really cool. But the way that's done is using a super high ND filter to darken that light so you can keep your shutter open for longer and allowing you for that long exposure photo in broad daylight. All right, so coming over to the other side, I've got the Canon 50mm 1.8. 50mm is just a really great focal range for just about anything and it's a 1.8 and it's small enough to just throw in the bag just in case you need it. I don't like to carry a lot of just in cases and I like to bring only the things that I'll need but this thing is like literally smaller than my smaller than my hand, like my palm. See that? Now this next thing is really, really important for the camera I use. This is a Canon EF2R mount adapter. This allows me to mount my EF lenses on spoiler alert, my Canon R EOS R that I shoot with right now. Normally it goes on the bottom side of this bag, but right now I'm shooting on it. My other camera over here is the Canon Rebel T3i. This is the camera that I lend my friends if they ever want to come along with me. And a lot of them don't have their own camera gear, so I, I pack them like their own separate bag with that camera and their own EF lenses. And every once in a while, if I do want to use an EF lens, I'll, I gotta use this adapter. It's about the same size as the 50 millimeters, so again, not too much hassle to bring along with you anywhere you go. But it saves you, it saves you a ton of money. You know, these RF mount lenses, ridiculously expensive. I don't know how the heck I'm supposed to afford those. I can afford EF lenses and I can afford this EF mount adapter, so works for me. All right, so moving on to the camera itself. Like I said, I shoot on the Canon EOS R, which I'm shooting on right now. That's why it's not in the bag. But, um, this is a fantastic camera. It's Canon's mirrorless camera right now. They just announced the Canon R5, and that camera seems to be like the dream camera. It shoots an 8K, 
Who needs 8K? Not me. Uh, I definitely don't need 8K. But mounted on that camera, I'm using the Canon RF mount 24-105 f4. Um, this is a great lens, honestly. I use this lens for just about anything. It's got that really nice in-between focal range, and I use that for just about everything. Photo, video, anything. The camera doesn't have in-body stabilization, but it does have the digital stabilization, which I found to work really well for me, especially working with the lens image stabilization. It just it just seems to work really well for me. Another thing that's really important is it's got the flip out screen, which I'm using right now, right there. And that's huge, especially if you're a YouTuber, a vlogger, whatever you wanna do. I think having that fully articulating, rotating screen, you just can't go wrong with it. I don't understand why a lot of other cameras don't use that, but I don't know. Maybe there's a reason that I just don't realize. So continuing on into the bag, I use the Manfrotto mini tripod and I bring this along with me because every once in a while, you don't need to set up your entire full tripod. And this is really great if you just wanna set it up for a quick long exposure. You're just gonna take like a quick um, group picture and you're gonna set a timer. It takes like 30 seconds to set up. It's got a fully articulating head. You can set it to wherever you want. It just screws into the bottom of your camera and it's just really quick, really easy. Saves me so many times. Highly recommend this. It's like 20 bucks I think on Amazon. Manfrotto mini tripod, get it. So to wrap it up, sometimes what I'll do is I'll carry my tripod with me or my monopod depending on what kind of shooting I'm going to be doing that day. One of my favorite types of photography are long exposure shots. So having a tripod or having a monopod there to like rest on something, just keep that camera steady is essential for what I do. So I use an Amazon Basics tripod that I got. It works really well, surprisingly. I thought I was just gonna use it temporarily and then move on and upgrade from it, but it works perfectly well. It uses two levels. I do everything with it. I've brought it everywhere with me. It's been through dirt, it's been through snow, it's been through everything, and it still works perfectly fine. So until it breaks or whatever, then I don't think I'm gonna be getting a new one. But yeah, guys, that wraps it up for my really quick what's in my camera bag video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you did like this video, remember to subscribe, hit that like button. Sorry, I did this whole thing in like 20 minutes. So if you guys liked it, let me know.